In my first video lecture on David Copperfield, I dealt with a brief biography of Charles Dickens, the novelist, and summarized the story of David Copperfield. In this section, I shall discuss some of the autobiographical elements in the novel and analyze the major characters. Ma'am, what is Billung's Roman? Is David Copperfield Billung's Roman? Yes, David Copperfield is often deemed as a classic example of the Bildungs Roman in English. Now, what is Bildungs Roman, as you asked? The German word Bildungs Roman means novel of education or novel of formation. So, Bildungs Roman is a class of novel that depicts and explores the manner in which the protagonist develops morally and psychologically. In this sense, the novel David Copperfield is Bildung's Roman. The novel charts the coming of age, the growth of David from childhood to maturity. David Copperfield is an autobiographical novel. What elements of the novel coincides with Dickens' life? Yes, of course. In David Copperfield, Dickens tries to come to terms with all those experiences which pained and shocked him. but. They also shaped and molded his vision as a creative writer. We come to know that young David is sent to work in a warehouse, just as Dickens himself was. Dickens records this painful experience in a slightly disguised form in this novel. He felt that he had been unjustly deprived and abandoned by his parents and forced to take on the responsibilities of the adult world. Mr. Micawber, always in debt, always hoping that something will turn up, is based on the character of Dickens's father. Micawber's imprisonment for debt mirror his own father's, and like Micawber, his father was an affable and generous individual. Even Dora is drawn from Dickens's memories of his first love, Maria Biednell. The intermingling of fact and fiction is also perceptible in the marked similarity between Dickens's and David's careers. David's vocations from proctor in Doctor's Commons to shorthand reporter to professional novelist follow those of his creator. Now, analysis of the character David Copperfield. The novel revolves around the protagonist David Copperfield and records his growth from innocence to maturity. David spends much of his youth forced to make his own way in the world, haunted by the threat of poverty. David works hard to achieve financial security. He takes up multiple jobs at the same time and eventually finds lasting success as a writer. As a child, David is fairly meek and passive, but the experiences he goes through force him to develop a more mature, active and independent personality. David is bad at judging people. Steerforth's treachery we are aware from the moment we meet Steerforth that he doesn't deserve the adulation David feels toward him. David doesn't understand why he hates Uriah, but we can sense Uriah's devious nature and his treacherous intentions. David's complex character allows for contradiction and development over the course of the novel. David is trusting in kind. David also displays great tenderness, as in the moment when he realizes his love for Agnes for the first time. David, as a young man in love, can be foolish and romantic. His unwise marriage with Dora leaves him unhappy. Although the two feel real affection for one another, Dora's childishness prevents their relationship from maturing and deepening. However, he develops a more mature point of view and searches for a lover who will challenge him and help him grow. He finally marries Agnes and lives happily. Ma'am, who is the antagonist or villain in the novel? Mr. Edward Murdstone or Uriah Heep 
or stay firm. Well, Mr. Uh, Murdstone, Edward Murdstone is the chief antagonist in the first half of the novel. Edward Murdstone is Clara Copperfield's second husband whom she marries when David is roughly eight. Murdstone is handsome and seemingly charming. David instinctively distrusts him from the start. After the marriage, however, it quickly becomes clear that Murdstone is dictatorial and cruel. Together with his sister, Miss Jane Murdstone, he attempts to teach Clara firmness, supposedly for her own good, but more likely because he enjoys bending people to his will. He inflicts mental torments and physical cruelty on David. He uses him as a means of manipulating Clara and eventually beats him for botching his lessons. He is locked away in his room for biting Murdstone. After Clara's death, he pulls David out of his school and sends him to work at the counting house he partially owns. Mr. Murdstone's love for Clara is possessive and coercive, but he does seem genuinely grieved by her death. Near the end of the novel, David learns from an old acquaintance that Murdstone married a rich young woman but reduced her to a state of imbecility. Uriah Heep Now Uriah Heep is a scheming young man who works for Mr. Wickfield. He is undeniably one of Dickens's greatest villains, in fact. He has become synonymous with hypocritical opportunism. Uriah plots against Mr. Wickfield and tries to marry his daughter Agnes. He prides himself on being humble. Dickens's description of Uriah's repulsive appearance marks him as a negative character. You can very well see his picture on the right hand corner of the slide. His cropped red hair, lashless red eyes, high shoulders, long, lank skeleton hand and snake-like rhythm all align him with the devil. Uriah pretends to be subservient and self-deprecating. Once Micawber exposes his treachery, Uriah drops his veneer of false humility and vents his repressed anger come to the softer part of the novel, the character of Wilkins Micawber. Wilkins Micawber is a shabby but genteel man who is perpetually in debt. He speaks in flowery language and is prone to wild swings of emotion. Visits from creditors tend to send him into fits of despair. David first encounters the Micawbers when he rents a room from them while working at the counting house. He is capable of working quite industriously when he knows that doing so will benefit other people. This becomes particularly clear when Mr. Micawber uses his position as Uriah's clerk to expose his employer's wrongdoings. Ma'am, how do you compare and contrast the two wives of David? David Copperfield, Dora and Agnes. Well, Agnes Wickfield. When David meets her for the first time, Agnes acts as Mr. Wickfield's housekeeper, running the family's domestic affairs and providing her father with emotional support. In this role, Agnes is competent, loyal and compassionate. She is also deeply saddened by David's marriage to Dora Spenlow. Not only because Agnes herself is in love with him, but also because she foresees that the marriage will not make David happy. Ultimately, however, Agnes's patience and devotion are rewarded and the book's final pages depict her as the ideal Victorian woman and wife, selfless, supportive, wise and virtuous. Dora Spenlow is David's first wife and Mr. Spenlow's daughter. 
she and David develop a youthful infatuation with one another and eventually marry. She is somewhat spoiled and frivolous. Dora loves music, dancing and teaching her dog tricks. But she lacks the ability to run her husband's household or even fully empathize with his interests and pursuits. David initially finds this frustrating and attempts to reshape Dora's character to be more serious and mature. These efforts only distress Dora, however, and David eventually reconciles and accepts his wife for who she is. Coming to James Steerforth. James Steerforth is one of David's classmates at Salem House. The two become close friends. Steerforth is charismatic, wealthy and several years older than David. Steerforth truly harbors some affection for David and David for his part idolizes Steerforth. The two reconnect as young adults but suffer a permanent fallout when Steerforth runs away with little Emily. Steerforth eventually abandons Emily. He later dies in storm at sea. Throughout David Copperfield, Steerforth is difficult to classify as either a hero or a villain. He is unusually intelligent and charming and David retains some positive feelings towards him. If you have any question, you can post your questions in the comment box given below. Thank you.